Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you every Sunday morning on Bigfoot Country from 7 to 8 a.m. to bring you, the landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development in Pennsylvania. And you know, I do not, I have not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent landowners, royalty owners, property owners for oil and gas related issues, including lawyer speak, but not limited to gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews and consultations, breaches of gas leases, fighting the termination of your gas lease, royalty, royalty deduction issues, pipeline, pipeline right-of-way agreements, multi-unit well consents, lease amendments, modifications, ratifications, surface use agreements, roadway agreements, buying and selling gas rights. This is not an exhaustive list, but it gives you an idea of the things that are occurring out here in Pennsylvania's gas land. And we need to make sure that the Pennsylvania landowner, the Pennsylvania royalty owner, is not being taken advantage of. We need to make sure that when we're entering contracts, we are doing the best we can, that we are both maximizing the money that we're going to receive and limiting the authority that we're going to grant the company. And boy, do I have a great example today. An absolutely great example today. If I can get one message across to the listener, it is to please know that these companies are not only smart, they are brilliant and they are calculative. They will calculate with a lot of thought behind it. How do we approach a landowner and get them to sign a contract or agreement that is very beneficial to us as the company and not so beneficial to them? How do we do this? How can we present the company with an agreement and expand our rights, which we currently have? My thought, you know, how do we when we put all this legalese and this complicated language in the agreement, how do we do that to make sure we're getting the rights that we want and the landowner is still going to sign it? Well, of course, some people will sign anything and the companies know that. But then there is the group of people that says, hey, wait a second. I have seen how gas and pipeline companies have taken advantage of hundreds and even thousands and potentially 10,000 plus landowners, royalty owners in the past. So I'm not going to let that happen to me. I may learn from either my own mistakes or I will learn from the mistakes of others. But I will learn and I will make sure that I am not taken advantage of. Small commercial alert. Reviews and consultations with my office. I talk about it all the time because I do them all the time and they have proven to be so valuable. If you are presented with a document to sign, put the pen down, pick up the telephone, give us a call here, learn about reviews and consultations. If you do not call my office, please call the office of somebody who knows what they're doing, who represents landowners and royalty owners, and who is looking to help fight, educate you, help fight and educate you. We need, you know, we sign agreements, my clients sign agreements all the time, 
but we sign the best agreements that we can negotiate. And we also review the agreements to understand what are, what are the good parts of the agreement and what are the bad parts of the agreement. Just this past week, did a review and consultation with an oil and gas lease in Potter County, went over everything with the landowner. We talked about the pros and cons, positives, negatives of moving forward now or waiting. And the landowner ultimately decided that their decision was a very easy one. They were very happy with the process and made the right decision for themselves. Your decision might be different. But what you need is that specific advice to understand what the market is, what the market has been, the potential, no guarantee, but the potential of what may occur in the future, and to make sure that whatever decision you're making is with the most information and the best guidance that you can obtain. Because the state is full of people who made decisions without getting this information, without having the information and the education to make the best decision, and literally, literally and routinely have given up thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and literally into the millions of dollars on many occasions. So we have to stop that. And reviews and consultations usually take an hour or two, and we're able to identify and educate, and then the client Landowner, royalty owner has, an, in my experience, a very good idea on how they want to proceed and answer any and all questions. And it usually takes an hour or two. So really encourage you. I'll leave this here for now, but you can call the office 570-307-0702, regardless of your location. I do these with by telephone or in person. And it's always with me, no associate, no other attorney. It's you and I on the phone or you and I sitting in the office going over what you need to know, not what the company wants you to know, not just what the land man who works for the company, not you, the landowner, not what they want you to know, what you need to know and what somebody who's representing landowners, royalty owners, and this is what I do educating you on what you need to know and to provide you the guidance to make the right decision, to make the right decision. So really encourage you, regardless of your location, give us a call and see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, that's okay. And also, and I do mean this, if you don't call me, call somebody who knows what they're doing, who's working for you and do it before you agree and do it before you sign. Do it because there are so many benefits that may be available out there and you might be missing out easily on tens of thousands and many times on a hundred thousand or more. And we got to stop that. And we got to stop that. So give us a call 570-307-0702 and keep listening to all things Marcellus right here with me, attorney Doug Clark each and every week at this time on this station. Now, I, these companies, I said they're brilliant. They're brilliant. And another example occurred just this past week. Where? And I'll say in this case, the company was Southwestern. Southwestern. And Southwestern, I've been talking about these multi-unit wells where companies will drill a well that starts on a single well pad, as all wells do goes down, let's make it simple, we'll say go down 10,000 feet, then turns and goes outward horizontally through, we'll say, the Marcellus shell, goes out horizontally and continues on 5,000 feet, 10,000 feet horizontally, and let's even go 15,000 feet horizontally, so almost three miles out. Well, when that well that originates off of the pad, we'll call it the Clark well pad. When that well originates off of the Clark well pad, it is going down 10,000 feet and we're saying out 15,000 feet horizontally. Well, when you go out 15,000 feet horizontally, that's going to cover a lot of area. And many oil and gas leases allow the company to pull and unitize a bunch of parcels in order to make a production unit. 
So, normally, not always, not always, not always, not always, but many leases have a restriction that says that the unit, the production unit that your property can be placed in cannot exceed 640 acres. Many leases say that. Some leases say cannot exceed 1,200 acres. Some say 640 acres plus or minus 10%. But let's just for now, let's pretend to illustrate this point that the leases restrict the unit size to 640 acres. Well, if you drill a well down 10,000 feet and out horizontally 15,000 feet, when you draw the production unit that that well is going to produce from, it is going to be larger than 640 acres. So the company says, well, what we want to do, we'll take this well from the Clark pad. We'll drill it straight down 10,000 feet and then we'll go out 15,000 feet. And since this well is so long that it goes beyond the size of an individual 640 acre unit, what we'll do is we'll keep it gone and we'll go through the first unit, which we'll just say is 640 acres. And as we're 10,000 feet down and we're drilling out 15,000 feet, we'll draw a second unit. That is, you have well pad, you have first unit, 640 acres we'll pretend. Then the next unit is 640 acres. Then we'll even create a third unit. And let's say that one's 640 acres for simplicity. So what you have is a well that goes down 10,000 feet, then goes out horizontally 15,000 feet. And as it goes horizontally, it is going to travel through one unit, which is right against the well pad, one production unit which we're gonna say 640 acres. That well, as it's 10,000 feet being drilled outwards, 10,000 feet deep, but going outward 15,000 feet, it's gonna continue through the first unit. It's gonna, as it goes out 15,000 feet, it's gonna go through a second unit, a production unit, and then it's gonna continue into a third unit, and then it's gonna stop. So one single well is going through three different production units. And you as the landowner with the well pad, say on your property, well, your property is extremely unlikely that it's going to be in maybe the second unit it might be in, but probably not, but extremely unlikely it's gonna be in the third unit, which is the furthest away from the well pad. And all the other people who are in units one, two, and three, most of them are only going to be in one of the three units. You're going to have people who are close to the well pad who are going to be in the first unit. You have people that are further away from the well pad, say, you know, even like a mile away almost, they're going to be in the second unit. And then the people that are almost three miles away, they're in the third unit. So the question becomes, when you signed a lease, did you agree if your lease says only 640 acres in a unit, or if it says even 1200 acres in a unit, no matter what it says, did you agree that the company could drill a well that goes through a unit, including your property, and then continuing on to other units? the same well going through multiple units and some of these units will say two of the three do not include your property. So you are participating in a well that goes through your conduction, your production unit and it goes through other production units, the same well. Did you agree that that could occur when you signed your gas lease? Because another question becomes, how are people going to be paid? And the formula that companies use is they say, hey, look, we're going to look at the ratio of how much of this well is beneath the first unit, 
how long and how much of this well is beneath the second, and this so on to the third. And then when the gas comes out of this well, because they're not going to be able to say, okay, if 100,000 units came out of this, so we know exactly that we'll say 33 units, 30, 333 we'll say, like one third came out of the first unit, one third came out of the second, and one third came out of the third unit. They're not able to say that. But what they do is they say, okay, well, to make this simple, if all the units are equal in size, and let's pretend that the well bore is under each unit, say 5,000 feet, it's a 15,000 foot well bore, we'll pretend for now, 5,000 feet is in the first unit, 5,000 feet of the well bore is in the second unit, and 5,000 feet of the well bore is in the third unit. Since we can't tell exactly how much gas that comes out of that well that month came out of each unit, what we will do is we'll just take the total gas and we'll divide it by one third and we'll attribute the production of that well that goes under three units. And we're saying again that there's the exact same length of the well under each unit. What we're going to say is, is that since everything is equal here in this example, we will share the gas. One third of the gas production from this well will be attributed to the first unit, and that's how we'll pay those people royalties. One third will be attributed to the second unit, and that's how we'll pay those people royalties. And one third will be attributed to the third unit, and that's how we'll pay those people royalties. Did you agree to that? And I'm not saying you don't ultimately, but did you ever agree to that? And that's what the companies want you to agree to. And the question is, do you have to? Why do you want to do this? Why does the company want you to do this? And what benefit may you be able to obtain by agreeing to this? And I want to state that, state that again and listen to this closely, please. What benefit are you able to obtain to give the company permission to drill a well through your unit into other people's units. What are you going to get for that? And I'm going to tell you, I think you should get something for it. And unfortunately, people are just signing. Again, people are just signing. No, no, no. You need to get something for this. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can call me anytime, call the office, learn about reviews and consultations, multi-unit well consents. Now a new word, cross-unit wells. People start getting hip to this. People start realizing, ah, I know what you're doing, cross-unit or multi-unit wells. No, oh, no, these are cross-unit wells. Same thing, same thing. Multi-unit wells, cross-unit wells, anything like this, you really need to either call my office or call someone who knows what they're doing, give us a call, 570-307-0702. I am actively negotiating these multi-unit well consents, and I really think I can help you. I really believe we can help you, and that's why I'm talking about this so much. This is a huge issue, and if you're not calling us, I really think you're making a mistake. But again, if you're not calling us, call someone else. But call, call, call. Multi-unit wells, cross-unit wells, you got to do something. You can't just sign these agreements. You should be trying to negotiate them. And I will give you specific advice if you call and we're involved in this. I really want to hear from people because I'm pretty confident that I can help people in this. I'm very confident. So we want to hear from you. 570 307 0702. I want to help you. We're going to talk more about this. We're going to talk about what Southwestern did and what their attempt was. And hey, that's okay. They're allowed to do that. But what their attempt was to get the backdoor consent to these multi-unit wells through a surface use agreement. Stay tuned. This is a great example of how companies are literally brilliant. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you're joining me each and every week at this time on this station. Quick reminders, we're doing the show, I'm doing today's show a lot on cross-unit wells, multi-unit wells. I cannot say it enough. If you have a multi-unit well consent, 
If you have a surface use agreement that involves cross unit wells, if you have a cross unit well agreement, a production allocation agreement, call, call, call 570-307-0702. Doing some very good things with these agreements and we really wanna make sure that everybody's benefiting in the best way that they can. Stop signing these agreements, get assistance. You can call us 570-307-0702 regardless of your location. Call, see if it's right for you. And again, if it's not, call someone else, but call, call, call. I want you to call. Please don't take that as, hey, he doesn't want me to call. I do want you to call, but I don't want you to feel that you, you, if you don't want to call me, don't call me, but I want you to get help because people are, again, as you know, it's a broken record signing these bad agreements. And the new thing is multi-unit wells, lease amendments, modifications, and ratifications. We have to. And pipeline agreements. We have to just stop signing these. We have to. We have to. Too many of our landowners are being taken advantage of and we got to stop it. And I'm, I know the reviews and consultations and further work, we can really assist you. So that's why it just means so much to me. It really does. It really does. These multi-unit wells to me right now are presenting an outstanding landowner opportunity. But if you're not talking to somebody who can explain that to you, and discuss what can potentially be done and what's the best way to handle this, you're making a major mistake and missing out on a potential opportunity. When we have an opportunity, we need to seize it and maximize it. We don't pick up the pen, we pick up the phone. And these multi-unit well consents and these lease amendment modifications and ratifications can present an outstanding opportunity and we can't miss out on it. Okay, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can contact the office, 570-307-0702. That's 307-0702. And make sure you keep joining me for All Things Marcellus each and every week at this time on this station. So let's get into this Southwestern Surface Use Agreement presented to a landowner with a well pad on their property. Now, surface use agreements are often used to document what a company is going to do on your property, often with well pad agreements, but they can be with many other types of activity. Surface use agreement. It's an agreement to use the surface of your property. As always, you shouldn't just be signing these things. But in this case, I said, boy, this is interesting the landowner already has a well pad on their property and now they're presented with a surface use agreement. Normally, you're presented with a surface use agreement prior to the construction of the well pad. Or maybe, I said, well, maybe, okay, maybe they want to enlarge the pad because the person was smart, had a good lawyer, reduced the size, negotiated, minimized the impact on the property. Now the company wants more. So we have to look, what are your rights? Do you have the ability to say no or to negotiate? What are your rights? So the person sends me the surface use agreement. So it's, a for, well, it's a document presented to them by the company. So I'm going to highlight a couple things here. Well, I'm going to highlight several things. So a surface use agreement, remember, what does that say? Surface use. We're going to use the surface of your property. That's what one would think. So this surface use agreement is entered into, is presented by the company with the landowner. And here's, um, we have the beginning, what are called recitals. So we're going to read two of those to you. One is it says, whereas in order to more completely and efficiently develop the mineral estate in the lands and in other lands, Southwestern desires to utilize the well pad and access road for the drilling, completing, producing, operating, and maintaining one or more horizontal oil and or gas wells to be drilled laterally to be completed and to produce from both the pooled unit 
on which the well pad and access road are located, and here it comes, and one or more other pulled units. So this says that in order to more efficiently develop, Southwestern has come to you and says, hey, we want to drill from your pad, not only through your unit, but we want you to give us permission to extend that well to reach out additional feet, you know, say like my example, 10,000, 15,000 feet and go into other units, other units, which you're almost certainly not a part of when you have the well pad on your property. So this is requesting to use your well pad as the point of origin for a well that's going to go out, and we'll say in my example, just for example, 15,000 feet. Well, again, does your lease allow that? And I would say there's a really big question if it does, because why is the company presenting this to you? Because they're afraid that it doesn't. They're seeking your permission. And when you have a well pad on your property, I'm going to tell you, there's a difference between having a 5,000 foot horizontal well and a 15,000 foot horizontal well. More water, more activity, reaching out into other units. Well pad can last much longer in time and it could be a larger pad and the company's going to save a lot of money and you're going to get what benefit? What benefit are you getting? And again, you need to get a benefit. In my opinion, you need to get a substantial benefit substantial benefit, especially when the well pads on your property. But are you offered a substantial benefit? Well, do companies come out and just give a top offer? Or do they come out and give you documents saying, hey, a lot of people are just going to sign anything? Well, we know the answer to that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join us each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. So, okay, let me go to the second paragraph I want to highlight in the recital. So again, companies getting these benefits of one pad is going to develop three units. That pad may be enlarged. More water is going to be needed. If that water is being trucked in, you have a three times the size well that you would have otherwise had. In my opinion, it is darn clear you need to be compensated for this and you need to try to limit it. This could extend the lifetime of your gas lease. This is a big, big request. But the problem is, is many people don't understand it because the land man who works for the company is going to be stressing, oh, this is going to be good for the environment. We're going to drill these wells more quickly. Now, they don't give you any assurance of that. That's not in the paperwork. But the reality is, is they're going to save probably millions of dollars if you agree to this and you're going to have additional activity, perhaps your lease may last many years longer. Perhaps you have, boy, if they drill 10 of these, if they drill 20 of these, how much more truck traffic is that for you? Think about that. One well, two wells, three wells, 5,000 feet, four wells, 5,000 feet versus 20 wells at 15,000 feet. How much more of a burden is that on your property? Again, that's an example, but that's the reality of something that could occur. And when you sign these blanket wide open agreements, be prepared. You might have just become an industrial zone, your property. So you have to protect that. You have to limit it and you have to negotiate. And remember, does your lease even allow this? Does it allow it? And if it doesn't, what can you do about it? What should you do about it? And those are the questions that you need answered by somebody working for you who knows what they're doing, not questions that should be answered by the gas company. We can't rely on the gas company to educate us on these important matters. And then they're calling, they're calling, they're calling, they're pressing, they're pressing, they're pressing. Why? Because they need it. Not because you need it, because they need it. Signals, signs, opportunity. We need to take advantage of this. If you are not negotiating multi-unit well consent documents, you are making a mistake. If you are signing surface use agreements without getting representation, you're making a mistake. 
you're making a mistake. Let me go on then. Second part here in the recital says that the landowner is willing to grant Southwestern the right to make such use of the well pad and access road subject to the provisions in this agreement. Now, I went real long my first segment, so I'm going to button this one up here, and we're going to get into the meat and bones of this agreement. But this is a surface, I'll tell you this, this is a surface use agreement that is going to, you're going to find out, that it's going to give the company, if it's signed, what's called a subsurface easement. Boy, isn't that funny? A surface use agreement. Remember, that's the title, all in capitals, of this document, surface use agreement. And as you're going to hear, you're granting a subsurface easement if you sign this, and not just one, one for every well. And that's just the beginning. And I'll tell you more. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me every week at this time on this station. Call us, learn about reviews, consultations, negotiations, stop signing pipeline agreements. Stop signing surface use, multi-unit well consents, amendments, modifications, ratifications, and as always, gas leases, roadway agreements, without getting at least a review and consultation to understand your rights and options. 570-307-0702. And keep joining me each and every week at this time on this station. And yes, that includes you, my friend Dave. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for the information you need regarding gas development. Also, give us a call. Learn about reviews and consultations. I do them all. We do them by phone. We do them in office. We do them with landowners all across Pennsylvania and people across the country who own property or gas rights in Pennsylvania. So don't be discouraged by distance. Give us a call. See if we can help you. And if we can, great. If there's, if we don't think you can, we can. That's okay too. But give us a call and see if we can help. I truly want to help everybody we can. I, we really, really do. Love what I do. I love what I do. 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. Real quick for my friends in Tioga. We are, I am, please, I want to hear from you going to do something and we're getting ready and we're ramping it up if you are shut in if you're shut in by shell sweppy and you have a vertical well or even a horizontal and you're shut in for seven or more years i want to hear from you i want to hear from you because as you know it's wrong you didn't come into this deal saying, oh, yeah, when I signed a gas lease in 2005 or 2006, I thought I'd be sitting here in 2018 and be held by a vertical well, which is capped, never produced, never connected to a pipeline and just sitting there. No, to me, that's bogus, It's something else, but I can't say it. So we need to do something about it. And we're going to we're going to. So I really, really want to hear from you. Call the office 570 570- 3070702 we're ramping it up we have clients we're getting ready to make some moves and i want to hear from as many people as we can because in my opinion it's wrong and that's why I, look i know it sounds corny but that's why i'm a lawyer i want to stop things that are wrong we want to, i want to help people so i really want to hear from you I really want to hear from you and see if we can help you. And if we can, we'll tell you what we think we can do, tell you how we do it, and see what you think. And if that's right for you, great. If it's not, that's okay too. But call and, call and learn your rights. See if we can help you. Really encourage you. Again, 570-307-0702. And if you're signing these multi-unit well consents, spread the word. Stop signing them. Call me. Call somebody. But you should not be signing these forms that are presented to you. Again, well, my general advice is no one should be signing forms that are sent to them without getting legal assistance. And th then when you call, we give specific advice. But really, generally speaking, you, can't, you just should not be signing these agreements. We have to stop it because there may be, there may be the potential to benefit you and benefit you significantly. But you'll never know if you don't call you don't do the review and consultation or call someone who knows what they're doing that's negotiating these things, but we got to stop signing. I know I say it all the time. We got to stop signing, put down the pen, pick up the phone. All right. 
Let's get back to Southwestern presents a surface use agreement to a landowner who already has a well pad on their property. Now, again, I got to say this again, the surface use agreement, that is the name of the document, surface use agreement, an agreement to use your surface. That's what you would think. So we get in here. It says that now, if you're just joining us, this, this document, we talked about these multi-unit wells or what Southwestern call, calls a cross unit well, where a well originates on a well pad and goes down, and my example has been 10,000 feet, then turns horizontally and goes out 15,000 feet. And when it goes out that far, it is not contained in just one production unit. It goes through the first production unit, through a second production unit, and goes on and it goes into and through and stops at the end of a third production unit. So you have one well going through three different units. But the person who has the well pad on their property, they only have property in the first unit, which is close to the well pad. And the question becomes, does their lease allow the company to drill a well from their property through their unit and into another unit and into somebody else's unit, into a third unit? Well, it you know, very well may not. And it probably doesn't. And that's why you're given this agreement. So... You, if you sign an agreement like this, are going to expose yourself to potentially many wells that are much longer than what your agreement contemplated, and you're going to have wells on your property that's producing gas from three different units, two units you have no property in, and you're going to be agreeing as to how that royalty from the well is drawing gas again from three different units how that royalty will be apportioned or allocated to the three different units. So you're agreeing to that if you sign one of these agreements, but if you don't sign one of these agreements, can the company drill these wells? And the companies want to. So will the companies negotiate? Will they give you something in return for the great benefit that you're going to receive? And I think that they will. Okay, so I'm going to turn back to this surface use agreement presented by Southwestern to a landowner with a well pad on the property. Again, surface use agreement, so they're normally done whenever a company just wasn't, wants to put a well pad on the property. But this one does a whole lot more, and that's why I say we got to understand these documents. So in the next paragraph I want to highlight is the granting clause, the grant clause. And in this case, it says that the landowner, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit because it's long, but I'm going to talk about all the important parts. Landowner grants and warrants onto Southwestern and its, its successors and assigns an exclusive easement and right of way on, over, and across the well pad and access road, and here, listen to this, and a subsurface easement through the subsurface of the lands. Now, most people aren't going to know what that is. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do this, get into this and explain a subsurface easement today. I've done actually shows on this in the past, but needless to say, I have done with clients separate subsurface easement agreements. Instead of a subsurface being buried and couched in a surface use agreement, like this is happening right here, we did our own agreement called a subsurface easement agreement. And in every one of those, the landowner was paid multiple thousands of dollars. Think 10, 15, even more for a subsurface easement. But in this case, again, you're presented with a surface use agreement, which then says that in there, again, that you're granting them a subsurface easement through the subsurface of your lands. What for? For the purpose of drilling, completing, equipping, producing, operating, and maintaining one or more horizontal oil and or gas wells collectively called cross-unit wells. And it says whose surface locations are on the well pad. So it's on this person's well pad, but that are completed. So the meaning the end of these cross-unit wells, but are completed and produced from 
the lands, being this person's lands, and or in lands pulled therewith, and lands included in one or more adjacent pulled units in search for oil and gas. So let me explain. That's saying it's a multi-unit well. They're calling it a cross-unit well. It's going to originate on this person's property. It's going to go through the unit that they're a part of, the pooled unit that they're a part of, and then it can go on to other units. No limitations on number, no limitations on amounts of subsurface easements that you're granting, which you don't even know most likely what they are. And there's value. There is so much value to this. And the question is, are you getting that value? So goes on. So it's saying we're going to now have the right to drill these cross unit wells. And we're going to drill them for your single well pad. And we have the right to do that. Then there's this next paragraph called a non-interference, saying that you, the landowner, shall not interfere with Southwestern's quiet, undisturbed, and continuous possession, use and enjoyment of the well pad and access road, unless you obtain their prior written consent to do so. Do you need to agree to that? How big is the pad? And Southwestern, interestingly, routinely tries not to minimize these pads by getting you to sign another agreement that says, I'll leave this pad open until the last well produces. Well, welcome 20, 25 acre, 15, or whatever that size pad is. Welcome it for the potentially in the next century. Then throw in the fact that you can have multi-unit wells because you've agreed to these cross-unit or multi-unit wells. And now this pad site can last longer. And you've agreed to subsurface easements. What have you been given in return? What are you given in return? And I'm going to say that I don't think what you're going to be offered is going to be anywhere near enough. So the question is, what can you do about it? What are your rights? We're going to talk more about this. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. Any and all oil and gas representation, give us a call, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. Learn about reviews and consultations, other representation, royalty, lease termination, deductions. Give us a call. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus and the information you need regarding oil and gas development. Give us a call. Learn about reviews, consultations, other representation, regardless regardless of your location, 570-307-0702. So I'm going to jump right back into this because I want to cover this all because this is an amazing document. It's entitled a surface use agreement, but we established already that you're granting um, apparently unlimited subsurface easements. Subsurface easements you're granting in a surface use agreement. You're also, in this case, granting the permission for the company to drill a well that originates on your property and goes through your property and your unit and out into another unit that you have no interest in and then out into another unit that you have no interest in. And the question is, is what are you getting in return? But back to this surface use agreement. Next paragraph I want to highlight says it's entitled Assignment. And it states that, in part, this easement, or I'm sorry, the easements, <laughs> the easements, plural, the easements herein granted are appurtenant to the cross unit wells. And the land to which the production of the hydrocarbons or gas from such wells are attributable, which we call, which is defined as the appurtenant lands. And as such, we'll also run with the lands. Now, let me explain that. Let me explain that. So what this is saying is, is these subsurface easements you're granting. Again, the company's asking this because they think they need it. They think they need it, and they probably do. They ask for a subsurface easement, and they're saying that that easement survives as long as these cross-unit wells exist, which, again, could be 50 years or more. So you're granting easements for every one of these cross unit wells, my opinion, you better be getting something in return. And when they talk about a pertinent lands, that means units in which you do not have property in. Units 
which you don't benefit from. So the well on your property is being drilled out into multiple units. In our case, we're saying three, but you only benefit from the first unit. But yet you have all the surface activity for the wells that are servicing three units. You better be compensated for that. You're also granting subsurface easements, which a company probably doesn't have the right to do unless they get your permission. So again, you need to understand these things, and I'm not sure that the company's going to tell you that. <laughs> and you know, I mean, we all know that. So we need to make sure that you're getting the information that you need. These are complicated, powerful documents that you need to make sure that you're maximizing because this is either an opportunity or you can simply decline it. That's the way I would look at it, and I think that's the way you need to look at it goes on because as it always does you know it gets worse the next item term term this agreement shall remain in full force and effect during the period commencing on the effective date meaning the date of the agreement and expiring upon the expiration of all oil and gas leases south of southwestern covering the appurtenant lands now remember, what did I just say the impertinent lands are? They're the units that are, they're the properties that are in the unit two and the unit three, where you don't have any property in my example in this case. So you have the well pad in your property. You're agreeing that a well from your property can go into multiple units, and not just one, unlimited number, can go into multiple units that you have nothing to do with, that you have nothing to do with, and your lease you're agreeing by this. Listen to this. You're agreeing that this agreement remains in full force and effect during the period commencing from the effective date, which is essentially when you sign the agreement, and expiring upon the expiration, listen to this, of all oil and gas leases of Southwestern, not just yours, of all oil and gas leases of Southwestern, Southwestern covering the appurtenant lands, meaning those other units. You have just agreed that your lease stays alive until all these other leases terminate. You just agreed that your lease stays alive until you are agreeing that this lease stays alive until the expiration of all oil and gas leases of Southwestern covering the appurtenant lands. That's crazy to me. I like, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I lose my mind in this. And people are signing this. People are signing and have no idea. Your lease now does not end until the leases end in these other units. Nobody that I know would be signing that, understanding it, unless they were receiving a benefit that justified signing it. But yet people are signing because, I don't know, they're afraid to pick up the phone and call. And that's why I promote so much these reviews and consultations. You need to understand this and then decide, do you want to do it? And the landman who works for the company and not you, the landowner, is probably not going to break down the impact of multiple subsurface easements, the impact of the fact that th your lease now is uh, going to survive until all the leases in every unit that these wells go to survives. Opportunities maybe to lease again in the future, additional surface activity on your property and what are you getting from it well you better be getting something you better pick up the put down the pen and pick up the phone we got to stop this guys we have to stop this and this i see is a great opportunity an opportunity multi-unit well consents production allocation agreements these surface use agreements i'm telling you guys it's an opportunity and if you're not taking advantage of it you're making a mistake you're making a mistake. Don't get fooled. Get good advice. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give us a call, 570-307-0702.
Now, let's have some fun. <laughs> let's have some fun. You hear me talk about the landman free pass? I say the landman's not going to tell you, meaning the landman can say, you know, I say landman free pass is my joke. They can say whatever they want. Listen to this language. If this doesn't tell you that you better darn well talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, who's out there trying to help you. If this doesn't tell you that, nothing, nothing will. So this says, the section is entitled Entire Agreement and Amendment. And I'm just going to get to the, the really amazing language. And again, if this doesn't tell you you need to get help, I'm not sure what does. Land, here's the language. Landowner acknowledge and represents to Southwestern that the landowner is not relying upon any additional statement, act, conduct, omissions, or event attributable to Southwestern, known or unknown, in entering into this agreement. Next sentence. Listen to this. This is my landman sentence. No agent, employee, or representative of Southwestern. And listen to this. No agent, employee, or representative of Southwestern has authority has any authority to bind Southwestern to any affirmation, representation, or statement outside of or in conflict with the stated terms of this agreement. I'm going to say that again. No agent, landman would be an agent. No agent, employee, or representative of Southwestern has the authority to bind Southwestern into any affirmation, representation, or statement outside of or in conflict with the stated terms of this agreement. Goes on. And the landowner hereby acknowledges and represents that the landowner has not relied upon and will not rely upon any such affirmation, representation, or statement or any act, conduct, omission, or event attributable to Southwestern. So that means that you can't rely on what the person who is the agent or representative or employee of Southwestern tells you. You can only look at this document and see what's in there. That's my landman free pass. They can say anything, anything withhold anything, omissions, and you can't say later, oh, I relied on that. No, because you're saying right here, you're saying right here, no agent, employee, or representative of Southwestern has any authority to bind Southwestern to any affirmation, representation, or statement outside of or in conflict with the stated terms of this agreement. And landowner hereby acknowledges and represents that landowner has not relied upon and will not rely upon any such affirmation representation or statement or any act, conduct or emission or event attributable to Southwestern. Gosh, that should scare us. That alone should say, I need to pick up the phone and get some good quality information. We're up against it, everyone. As always, if you have any oil and gas related issue, see if we can give you a hand, see if we can help you. Give us a call, 570 570- 307-0702. Shut in Tioga County seven or more years. I want to hear from you. I want to see if I can help you. 570-307-0702. Remember, Landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. I, Doug Clark, do not have not and will never represent gas or pipeline companies. Put down the pen, pick up the phone. Have a great week, everyone.